Welcome, Kena Fantasy Football fans. And it is the actual Super Bowl week, Super Bowl 55 for the NFL. And we had the Kena Bowl a few weeks ago before the playoffs started. So I thought it would be great to make a special episode uh, to bring everybody up to date, not only of the, about this year, but also about years past uh, for the Kena uh, super or Kena Bowl uh, lore, right? Uh, to show who's won it in the past and to set ourselves up, obviously, uh, to celebrate this year's winner and then also to uh, prepare ourselves for the real Super Bowl between uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Kansas City Chiefs. So, with that, I'm going to go ahead and just get to the uh, break the big news for those of you who haven't heard yet. Um, we had uh, Kurt down and uh, GA Jeep Life completely destroyed the uh, River Rats in the Cana Bowl. Uh, most of that was due to the Kamara 52 point uh, Christmas Day gift, uh, and we'll get to that um, more in the in the um, interview we have with Kurt a little later on. Uh, but great performances all around, and as you can see, uh, this was a two week um, game. Uh, so the River Rats squaring 148 and Jeep Life scoring 269, which is, that is a huge score uh, for two weeks. I mean, that's averaging, you know, 130 and some change each week, which, um, yeah, again, that's, anytime you score over 100 points is, a, is great. 130 is just unbelievable. So really wasn't even that close, as you can see some of the top scores here. You know, um, Kurt's top three scores, Kamara, Brady, and Montgomery, all uh, all outscored the River Rats top scorer Aaron Rodgers. So, I mean, it was it was a pretty big difference. Um, so, with that, um, you know, great year all around. Uh, thanks for everybody participating, and uh, with, we're going to go ahead and move on uh, to some of the history of the league, and then uh, into an interview with Kurt. So, a little bit of the history of the league. Back in uh, 2015, when football players wore leather helmets and uh, the Ford Pass had just been uh, invented uh, way back then, I know Dan probably doesn't even remember this. It seems like a dream right now. Uh, but in our first year in 2015, uh, Dan and Unparalleled Dominance had the trophy, uh, was the first, or they were the first. And of course, Rob and uh, Kenny were uh, second and third place there, which, you know, nobody remembers that, right? I only remember the champ. In 2016, we started a trend for the next uh, four years. So John and Capital Punishment took it, uh, beating uh, Kenny and the Cana Bowl. The next year, it started a, uh, a trend. Um, uh, Koa and Vader's Fist defeated John um, in the Cana Bowl to win his first championship and and of course this was the second time that john was in the um cana bowl 2018 um the third cana straight cana bowl for john and uh the second for koa and then uh koa defeated john again so our our only repeat champ as of right now and then in 2019 uh this became if you're sensing a trend here uh there's a good reason it was again Koa and John in the Cana Bowl, and uh, this time with John coming out on top in 2019. So, uh, so yeah, there's been a lot of uh, John and Koa, Vader's Fist, Capital Punishment, uh, Cana Bowls. So, um, you know, John departing the pattern this year with Capital Punishment not being around uh, meant that they weren't going to repeat and they were going to have to hold fast with only two Cana Bowl championships. So, and then uh, moving on over to this year, of course, we have uh, Kurt. We have a uh, brand new uh, trio at the top. Uh, folks that have never, teams that have never been, I don't believe even in the playoffs. Uh, and so we had Kurt uh, winning the Cana Bowl this year with uh, uh, Renee coming in second and Rocky coming in third. So great to see some uh, new teams up there. And, um, you know, they did it by scoring a lot of points and destroying a lot of opponents. 
So great job there. And with that, let's go on to a interview with our champ this year, uh, Kurt, and, and he'll give us, he, he gives some really cool insights in this uh, interview. All right, Kurt, well, congrats, congrats on your 2020 Cana Bowl win. And uh, just to have a few questions for you, just uh, so you can impart your knowledge on the rest of us that weren't so lucky um, and came in uh, either second or, you know, second loser or worst. So uh, just real quick, after the draft, what was your feeling? Uh, you know, did you think you were going to have a good year? I thought I was going to have a really good year. The The trio of the quarterback and the running back and uh, the kicker from Tampa Bay, those were like my base all year. So I, I was I was pretty happy after the draft seeing seeing that right. and seeing so, seeing a couple of the wide receivers I got too were was very good. Right. So are you a Tom Brady fan or just a uh, Tom Brady fantasy football fan? <laughs> Tom Brady fantasy football fan <laughs> for right. sure. Yeah, I actually had Tom Brady a few years back when he had that suspension for Inflate Gate. Uh, wow. And unfortunately, you know, drafted Adrian Peterson to help me until Tom Brady came back after uh, the four week suspension. And I think Peterson got injured in week two, and that was the end of that season. So, yeah. <laughs> but and yeah, definitely. He's, I had Aaron uh, Rodgers last year as my quarterback, and that would have been just as good as this year. <laughs> Yeah, and, and actually the team you're playing uh, in the uh, Cannibal, uh, Renee, had Aaron Rodgers. Very, very uh, strong performance this year. So. Yes. Uh, cool. So, yeah, you had a uh, pretty high number of transactions throughout the year also. Any any insight or any one that you can um, recall? Well, the, the I think the biggest one that I did, I tossed out the Tampa Bay kicker and brought in a different kicker and it happened to just work out. That kicker had a great game that it was, it was just the luck of the draw. And the only other right. real big one that I made was I brought in a wide receiver one time for, for like one game. And then I switched out defenses for a couple of games. I was switching out defenses a lot because people were getting hurt all over the, all over the mm -hmm. season. So yeah, no, nothing, I was just continually watching the numbers and watching the stats and looking at the plus and minus of, of each player. And that's really the high number of transaction was. I was just, it takes five minutes to go in and look at stuff once a week mm -hmm. and then set your team up and just let it where the ball drops, it drops. So that's what I was doing. Right. Yeah. This year in particular with the COVID issues, uh, I know COVID protocol in the NFL required teams to do a mandatory test Saturday morning or the day before they played, if they played on Thursday or, um, you know, it would be Wednesday morning. And uh, I know that was uh, when I basically woke up on Saturday morning, went to go see, you know, what, uh, how my team had been affected by COVID, which well, you, had to, some, you, had to, you had to watch. The, yeah. You had to watch the future too. Um, of what they thought was going to happen. Oh, the, it was just a COVID test. He was because then they'll come up on Friday and Saturday, like you said, and say, "Oh, yeah, he was fine, and you know he, mm -hmm. he's going to be able to practice." So then you got to make a right. decision. Yeah. So yeah, I did note overall uh, looking at the total transactions this year for the league were way up, and I can only attribute that to um, everybody waking up on Saturday morning and figuring out their starting lineup was uh, some of them were not available. And like you said, I think that made a huge impact on defenses. It did. Uh, some defenses seemingly overnight, um, you know, from one week to another would play really well and then play really poorly because they were missing some key people. So. Correct. So we would, we would be, um, you know, really missing a major piece of this if we didn't ask you about the, the what's being called the Kamara Christmas gift in fantasy oh. leagues. Uh, that was, you know, obviously a 52 point performance by any player is going to give you a huge advantage. And um, any any comments about that? I mean, how happy were you? Did you watch the game on Christmas? And how happy were you after you found out about it? I, I did not watch that game on, after, on Christmas. But I was extremely happy to 
to find out about it. Actually, I found out about it during what was going on because my son was uh, keeping up on it. So we, so we, I caught the last part of the game, but that was historic. So there's nothing. I mean, it doesn't get it doesn't get any better than the old adage of any given Sunday, and it doesn't get any. It doesn't say any more than that performance right there. Right. And, and this is, was on a Friday, which is uh, with the NFL is a very rare day to play on. Uh, and uh, but yeah, you're exactly right. Yeah, a very historic performance, and really that sealed the deal for you. I mean, that put the game, uh, the Cana Bowl, out of reach on Friday. And well, that was, almost, really that was performance. Just on that day. one performance was one third of, of mm -hmm. uh, the other team's total score for Renee. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And then. Brady and Gronk and everybody poured even more um, fuel on the fire. Uh, yeah, fuel on the fire on Sunday. <laughs> By that time, it was a rout. Um, and and really, I have to tell you, your performance throughout the year, it's very rare that uh, in fantasy that a team performs so well throughout the year. You were, you were ranked number one throughout pretty much the entire year and then uh, had a super strong showing in uh, the playoffs, which, you know, that's, that's, we, so I think overall, most of the owners are probably saying that, um, you know, the, the best team did win in this case. <laughs> so <laughs> it wasn't, wasn't a fluke where somebody just snuck into the playoffs and then, um, you know, had a few good weeks and won the cannibal. So, right. Well, cool. Yeah. Any uh, parting uh, tips or tricks that, uh, I mean, obviously you don't want to give away everything because uh, you're, you're probably planning on coming back and playing next year. I can't give away anything because I mean, the last, <laughs> the last few years that I have played, I've just been at, at the bottom and this year was just extraordinary. So extraordinary things happening in the world, which, actually helped out my uh team play extraordinary throughout the season so cool all right well great job and yeah thanks for the insight awesome all right so there you go i hope everybody enjoyed uh the results of the cana bowl i mean many of us maybe didn't enjoy it but we appreciated it Right. And uh, some of the history and interview with the, uh, the champ this year, Kurt, and uh, looking forward to next year. Uh, we will have, I guess, a virtual um, ceremony of uh, awarding the trophy. Well, we'll, we will get the ring to uh, Kurt via mail here in the next couple of weeks so he can uh, start enjoying that uh, for the winning the championship ring. And uh, we'll have the little placard that uh, Koa still has the trophy from a few years back that we'll be able to affix to the trophy. And hopefully soon we'll be able to uh, hand that hardware away in person. Uh, so with that, thanks for everybody's participation this year. It was a great year. And again, it's never too early to start thinking up a fantasy football team name and August will be here before you know it. So uh, thanks and have fun and enjoy the, the Super Bowl.